In order to track the changes on a specific file, we need to use this git diff, which will check the difference between an old version and a new version. But the first thing to do, I will just use this git diff tool to check for two files, which means two existing files in my in my machine. And for that, I will create a documents folder. Okay, let's just enter this document folder. If it's not a git, git repo, I will not use git for this document. And for that, you will if you use ls all, you will not find this dot git folder. Okay, let's just create two files. I will go for readme1.txt and readme2.txt. Okay, I have now two files. I will add hello on the first file, which is readme1. Echo. Okay. And I will add a hello world on the second one, which is readme2.txt. Okay, now I want to check the difference between these two files. Okay, now if I just list the files ls, then I just show the content of readme1.txt and readme2, readme2.txt. We'll find that there is a hello and a hello world, and we find out that this world so we have some difference between them. So this readme2 has this world, but this readme1 doesn't have that. And to check that, not manually, but using the git diff, so for that we'll use git diff, then when I will use the first file, which is readme.txt, and we'll find out what is the difference between readme1.txt and readme2.txt, and this is the difference. Changes are marked with the symbols. And in this case, when you're using plus, means that we add or update something. And for the, for the symbols right here means that we, are, we remove something. Okay, and the other interesting thing is the first line of the header is the symbols. We find out that we have the symbols right here and they are all, always used as the first symbols for the header. So they include these two numbers and what these two numbers do exactly or means exactly. So it means that we have some change. So we remove something on line one and we add something on line one. So the change happens on line one. And if you want to be sure for that, let's just open readme. Okay, I will open both files and I will move the change. I will move the change to the second line. Okay, save that. And let's just move to the other file and I'll move to the second line. So let's just close all. Then I'll just use the same command it diff read me one and read me two and they will find out that the changes are on the line two so we do want change on this line two on read me dot dash one dot txt and same for read me two dot txt so so far i used git diff to check two files that exist on my machine but it is not a git repo now i'll use it for a git repo for that i will create a new folder gs functions okay i think it exists then let's just enter to this GS functions. Let's just remove this func.gs. I'll create another one. Okay, let's just keep us create a new file function.gs. Okay. And I will create a function which will get three numbers for an array four, six, and eight and multiply it by two. Let's just use a row function. I'll go for x. Then what this function will return is it returns this x which will take each value from this array and multiply it by two. Okay. Let's just create a variable to get the result. Const result. That will console log the result. To save that. Okay, to check the result, I will use not function.gs. If we see this is the result, let's just open the same file here. Go for cd, yes, function, and they'll open this func file. Okay, this is what they I have this array, and I return, I just multiply this, this value by two, and this is the result four times two is eight. Okay, this is not our subject, but here I'm creating a function, and for that, let's just remove this const result and remove this line also because I'm not interested by result. And this GS function for now is not a git repo. Let's just initialize all of that. Now I have a git repo. I will add, but if I'm using git diff, I'll not have anything 
because I don't first I need to add everything and have a commit to check against it. And for that, I will just use add all, then I'll commit, go for add or initial commit. Okay, get stairs, I have no changes here. Now, if I use git diff again, I'll have nothing because I need to change something. Let's just change something again. I'll go for func.js and I'll use the function here instead of a raw function, which is not correct because this is not the correct syntax here. This is not the correct syntax, but I'm doing it for purpose. So I'm creating a problem here. Now, if I use git diff again, you will see that there is a change and which define here that I add this function. So this plus means that I add something and this minus means that I do something, I remove something from this line, which means that I remove or update something on this line. And this is what do I have here. So I add this function word. I will not commit the changes because it's not correct. So let's just first go to the func.js and remove this row and save that. Okay, let's just commit the changes. For that, I will use git add all. Then for the commit message is use ES5 format instead of ES6. Okay, let's just get stairs. Now I have nothing. If I rerun git diff again, I will have nothing. Now, what if I want to check the changes between two branches? So for that, I will create a new branch. Let's just check out the new branch and I will go, for example, for features. Okay, I switch to features. I switch again at the same place. Now, if I open this func.js, okay, let's just create a function which will filter the return of the result here to any value less than 10, it will be just remove it. Okay, for that, let's just use const, we'll go for numbers. Then I will create another variable result and I will go for this numbers, which is an array. And we use the filter function. Then I'll use the argument X and any value, which are any value which is less than 10, it will be removed. In this case, we'll only have eight. Let's just get this result on a console log. Result, save that, use not func. And as we see here, I have the each result. Now I do some update on the function.js, but where I do this is on the features uh, branch, not on the master. And if I use this, I get servers and I have a modified file. Let's just add that and commit the changes. Commit um, filter values. Okay, if I type git servers, nothing to change. Okay, let's just compare these two branches. Let's just first go to the master, which to master branch. Now I will just, just close that. I will use git diff, then the first branch and two dots, then the second branch in our case features. It will show me the difference between the first branch and the second branch. And this is what I have. I add this piece of code right here and I add also that. Just show you the line that are changed and I'm using this git diff to check uh, to check branches instead of only files. And if we just type git diff, it will give you if there is a modification, you are modifying something. Okay, let's just add another file. I'll go for index.js and I just go here. And when I'm switching to the git master, why you see this again? git func.js. I don't have the second function because I'm not merging merging the features branch into the master, but I'm just showing you the difference. I do that in a purpose because I want to just show you how to differentiate or how to, to see changes between two branches, in our case, master and features. Let's just edit something on func.js, return x times four. And in general, we use git diff, or we use git stairs. Let's just go git stairs or git log 
The three of them are used to analyze the current state of a Geechee repo, and you will find yourself using them a lot to analyze, as I already said, the state of a Geechee repo.